Welcome back. Later tonight on ABC, When We Rise, a mini series on the personal and political struggles and triumphs of the LGBT community continues. But right now, let's take a look at what kind of progress ha there has been in Florida and where we are still falling short. Same sex sexual activity was actually illegal in Florida until 2003 when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down state laws against sodomy despite being unenforceable. Florida's law against the sodomy still has not been repealed. Same-sex marriage became legal in Florida in January of 2015. But despite that change, on only nine counties, 30 cities, and one town in the state offered domestic partnership benefits. In July 2015, the law banning adoption by gay couples was repealed. Florida's hate crime law covers attacks based on sexual orientation, but not on gender identity. And locally, there is still a fight over whether students can use the bathroom of the gender they identify with. So where do we go from here? Joining us for more on the local fight for equality is Ken Sheelan, chair of Equality Florida, Molly Swift, program coordinator for Also Youth, and Nathan Brummer, a member of the Trans Action Florida's advisory board. Welcome to you all. But Ken, I want to start with you because, um, as I said at the outset, 20 years ago, many, most people could not even imagine uh, same-sex marriage being the law of the land. So am I correct about that? Well, absolutely. Even I couldn't believe that it would ever be something that would happen in my lifetime, even though I got married two years ago to my uh, male partner. It was what we were really concerned about at the time was equal rights. All we wanted to do was to be treated fairly. We didn't want to be discriminated against in, in our jobs or, uh, or in public accommodations or in employment. We, we did not... We did not want to have discrimination. Um, and so we used the, um, the African American Civil Rights Movement as a kind of inspiration and jumping off point. And we made enormous progress, I think, because as I said on the tape you showed earlier, we came out, we told people, you can't see that I'm gay. You have to hear me say it. You, I have to tell you that I am. And that's why we were able to hide for so long. It was a terrible burden to have to hide for so long. So the progress actually outstripped my expectations and I think the, the civil rights movements for LGBT pe people as well. It happened so fast. The, the, the public was ahead of us. The interesting thing is it's a done deal, but maybe not. Uh, because as I pointed out before the broadcast, there is a case going on at the Texas Supreme Court where the... I'll say it, the, the Republican governor and lieutenant governor of Texas has pressured the court in taking a case that gets to whether or not uh, domestic benefits um, sh should be given uh, in, in all cases. And it is the hope uh, of uh, conservative activists that it, this case makes its way all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court and gives that court uh, an opportunity to revisit the, the basic issue. Well, it sounds unconstitutional on its face because what you're saying is that a class of people should be treated differently than other groups of people, and that's simply unfair and unconstitutional. It's unequal treatment. So I can't imagine that that kind of case would get very far and get a favorable decision. Right. Nate, you know, there are a lot of people who are watching this broadcast now um, who, you know, if... If you don't wa walk in somebody's footsteps or have a family member, a son, a daughter, a niece, a nephew, whatever, uh, don't really understand uh, the fight and they have strongly uh, held uh, beliefs, you know, do you talk to people like that um, you know, outside your own family maybe and, and try to have a conversation about where you are coming from? I do. I think that's where a lot of progress is made. 20 years ago and, and today, in, until it becomes personal, until there's a connection either in my family, at my job, in my neighborhood, to understand that LGBT Americans are in every aspect of life. Um, and in Florida specifically following um, the tragedy at Pulse, um, I, I think there's been a real um, resurgence in understanding why the fight for equality has to continue and has to continue um, across. Let me just get your impression. What yeah. do you think of, of some people who are in the public eye? I'm thinking about former Vice President Dick Cheney who yeah. became a supporter of same-sex marriage okay. but his daughter is, is lesbian. Yeah. There's another U.S. Senator who also, same thing, they, they switched over when it affected them. 
Yeah, I, I think, again, I think it goes back to it needs to become personal until people have that connection, and that's where we see a lot of progress in Florida across the aisle. Once folks have somebody in their family that they can understand the struggles that they've faced, um, they just, they're not on board. And, and Molly, I, we have less than a minute left, but I wanted to give you a shot here. Uh, how many young people are involved in your organization that they're just starting to deal with the, these issues in, in, in terms of how they're going to live their life? Oh, well, they're, they're all at different stages. And I would say we have maybe about uh, 100 kids on our roster. These are kids that come to our drop-in center at Also what Youth. Um, well, traditionally 13 to 21, but we're starting to see kids as young as 11. We're getting parents to call saying that their child is 10 or 9. And so now we're saying 21 and under. Okay. We are just getting started with this conversation on LGBT rights. It continues right after we check our weather, so stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the fight for equal rights in the local lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Our guests tonight are Ken Sheelan, Chair of Equality Florida, Molly Swift of Also Youth, and Nathan Bremer of Trans Action Florida. The issue that has been in the news most for the last year has been uh, transgender bathrooms, especially in the schools. We all know what President Obama did uh, in, in May of last year and last spring in terms of uh, directing uh, states across the, the, the country to uh, allow transgender youth to go to the bathrooms in which of the sex that they identify with. It has been an issue right here in Sarasota County uh, with uh, a student uh, from uh, a local school, uh, Pine View L uh, School, um, but the County uh, Board of Education has not taken a position uh, in terms of a district-wide policy. You know, Nate, I'll, I'll start with you. Sure. Um, what would you say to members of the school board and people who are watching this who do not want a policy and position taken? Well, so as a former public school student and a former teacher in public schools and as a parent. Actually, why don't you explain that? You yeah. were a teacher in the Hillsborough County Public Schools. I was a teacher in Hillsborough County. Um, off and on between uh, 99 and 2009, I taught uh, primarily seventh grade science. Um, but I taught uh, before I transitioned because um, I, I had to leave my position. It was clear to me that I couldn't stay teaching and transition, and so I, I left um, my teaching position. But while teaching, this was before we really had active GSAs on most of the campuses, gay straight alliances, um, and safe spaces for the youth um, to meet and to be. Um, what I would say to those school board members first and foremost, the classroom is for instructional purposes. It is not a place where children should be scared uh, or where they should be bullied. There are people who have, again, um, closely held beliefs that you should use the bathroom of the sex that you were born with, that parts are parts, and they use the, the description that, you know, if, if you have a, a daughter, you do not want somebody who has male anatomical parts going into their bathroom. When, when you are confronted with that kind of opinion, how do you respond? Well, it, it tells me some education needs to happen. Uh, if the focus is on that, then they're misunderstanding the issue. And I would need to take them back to understanding the primary purpose of education. And we see the most vulnerable students in our schools not able to get an education because of that fear of their safety. And, and that's the most important thing. I, I understand that there are different sides to the issue, um, but we're, we're literally talking about, in some cases, life and death. But we're, we're not talking about people who are uneducated. Actually, we're talking about some very intelligent people. And in fact, when we did that show mm -hmm. on this broadcast, our guest, uh, said it is a choice. You choose to live the way that you are living right now. Okay. It is not something uh, you could have chosen otherwise. Well, then it echoes to a time when I heard that argument in the broader LGBT movement 20 years ago, and it's not. And research supports that. Um, I, I respect that others can have their opinion, but I have to believe if we bridge the gap historically, we will bridge the gap on transgender equality as well. And that means coming back to the table and having some very real dialogue. Folks are doing that. So when we see the guidance pulled back by President Trump, for example, last week, there are school districts, not Sarasota, but other school districts across the state that are realizing the importance of protecting their transgender students and are taking those steps forward. Molly, let me ask you this, because you got into this because of your study. Mm -hmm. um, 
how did that come to be? And now that you are involved with also youth, what are you seeing in terms of, of the young people who come into the organization or, and are dealing with this very issue? Sure. Well, I'm from Middle Georgia originally, as we were talking earlier, and I chose to go to New College of Florida uh, based on that was the second most LGBT-friendly college in the country at the time. Um, it was an issue very close to my heart. I was not able to live out and open where, where I lived. I didn't feel comfortable. And so it was a whole new awakening for me, you know, 2008, 2012. And thankfully at New College, you know, they allow you to really specialize in whatever you're interested in. As a psychology and gender studies student, I was able to have an internship at Also Youth, a pretty extensive one. And so slowly over time, I remained involved and, and ultimately was employed. Now I'm finishing my master's of social work at USF Sarasota, and I've been able to continue specializing um, my, my work in this way. So how many young people are you dealing with right now? And, and I know that if, if whether you're, you're gay, bisexual, or transgender, sure. there are a whole boatload of issues that you're trying to work your way through. But, but the issue of, the, uh, of, of bathrooms is, is something that's in the news. And mm -hmm. uh, it's something that a lot of the young people that you're dealing with are also dealing with. And how are they dealing with it? Mm -hmm. Well. You know, on one hand, sometimes we see the bathroom, the bathroom debate as, as almost a red herring, as, as something to distract us from more nefarious, more, you know, scare, like even more, I don't know, life or death situations. However, it, it is very, very real to the youth that I'm working with. I know many youth, in fact, I was recently running the numbers, I think about 40 to 45 percent of our youth at Also Youth are, are identifying as trans. Many of them are having difficulty, not just with the bathrooms, but with locker rooms, and just ultimately being referred to in respectful ways. You know, there, there was a story out of Texas uh, mm -hmm. just in the last couple of weeks about, and I, hopefully I have this correct, it was uh, a young woman who is transitioning to male who is mm -hmm. taking testosterone, but mm -hmm. because of Texas law, wants to compete athletically in wrestling, and the law requires... She won the state championship. Right. And it, and it, it raises he, a difficult issue. He. He won the stage. Right. But it raises yeah. a difficult issue. In the women's be division. Because right. he is taking testosterone, and it seems like it's unfair competition against uh, young women who are, are, are not Absolutely. taking a, 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 a drug that, if it was professional athletics, is banned. And doesn't that make the point? There is a major difference. As, uh, as a person transitions from one sex to the other. And so we, we traditionally separate the sexes in many ways, you know, in, especially in sports. And it's unfair for somebody who's taking testosterone or, is, or who's a male to compete with females because we know that they have greater body strength and, and they're likely to overwhelm them. So it's, it's a matter of fairness. But to get back to your question earlier, Alan, about how do we get past this opposition? How do we deal with the school board and, and, and the community? Nate is right. It's education. And in fact, that's what we ha at Equality Florida have done. We have created a program called Safe Schools that focuses on LGBT, but especially trans issues. And we have offered that to a, a number of schools, uh, school districts around the state, including Sarasota County. We offered that to them over a year ago, and they have been silent about it. I've talked individually with school board members. I know that a majority of them support um, taking care of this issue, but they haven't done it yet. And, and we have less than a minute left. But I wonder if, if this makes any of you angry that people don't completely understand the issue unless uh, either you're involved with it or have a, a loved one who is. Of course, I am incredibly emotional about this. And, and there was a board member that I spoke to several years ago who, when I said, you know, our policies don't protect these students, she responded, well, has there, has there been a problem? Has there been an incident? There needs to be a problem or an incident before we start looking at the policies. Okay. Let's take a quick break. But when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. Plus, what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, the ruling on the Docs versus Glocks case. Welcome back. In just the last decade alone, we have seen a huge strides in the rights of gays and lesbian individuals, but the struggle for the trans community is still being fought today. Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Ken, I will start with you. Uh, what still needs to be done? 
we just need to treat each other fairly. That's all I want out of this fight. I just wanted to be, want to be treated like everybody else, whether it's in my home, whether it's in a hotel, whether it's in my job, whether I'm shopping at a, a shopping mall, driving my car down the street. I want to be just like everybody else. That's all I want. And I will be happy. But I don't want to be discriminated against. And thank God we live in this country where the Constitution says everybody has to be treated the same way. Molly, the, the obstacles and the challenges for uh, young people today is obviously a lot different than when Ken was, w was younger. Um, in many ways, I would imagine it's easier, but in what ways is it not? Well, I would say that youth are coming out at younger and younger ages. They do have the vocabulary to describe their experiences, but that might put them more in risk, at risk, especially when they're going to a public school. I think it's no coincidence that so many of these that I'm working with are in fact doing Florida virtual school or trying to get their GED finished. The public school system is just not working for many students, especially if they're identifying as transgender. And I think we should be holding our institutions accountable. Nathan, we've talked a lot tonight about transgender issues. What have we not talked about? Well, there, there are a lot. Um, <laughs> in 45 in, seconds. <laughs> in the LGBT movement, unfortunately, um, the transgender community is one that um, at times was left behind, but is now at the forefront, and it needs to be. Um, I would say, sort of borrowing on some of the words from President Trump last night, if he's making sure to not break any promises that were made against Americans, then I would also argue we need to not break the promises to all LGBT Americans, especially transgender Americans. This country is based on equality, and we have not seen equality for LGBT Americans. Uh, even with marriage equality, we're still facing discrimination in housing and employment, um, in public accommodations, and we're seeing real fa safety and, and fear concerns, and that has to stop. All right. Thank you all very much, and thanks for joining us tonight. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, the ruling in Florida's Dox versus Glocks case. Two weeks ago, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled doctors are allowed to ask pa patients about gun ownership. They haven't been able to do that since 2011 when the Firearm Owners Privacy Act was signed into law. We asked you what you think about the injunction against the measure. Jeanette Saliski writes, not a bad idea when you have loved ones put on meds with side effects they suffer depression issue. Jim Burchess writes, none you all freaking business. <laughs> Hope I said that right. That will be my nice answer if ever asked. And Eric Swatek writes, it's about child safety, not a ju about judging you about having guns. Stop being so paranoid. Signed, a sensible gun owner. Are you part of the LGBT community here on the Sun Coast? What have your experiences been like? Let us know by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Ken Sheelan is the chair of Equality Florida. Molly Swift is program coordinator for Also Youth in Sarasota. And Nathan Bremer is a member of Transaction Florida's advisory board.